Welcome to the Northwest Georgia District Aries training session on how to use your D-Star radio. Uh, if you had watched the 880 video, I appreciate that. And now we've moved on to the ID5100A. Now, we're not going to do a video for the 51A handheld because the operating system is very, very similar. If you can use the 5100, you can use the 51A. If you could use the 51A, you can also use the 5100. So there may be some some slight differences especially if you have the 51a plus 2 because it has the hotspot capability and once i'm able to afford one of those wonderful radios we'll do a video on it as well but let's go ahead and look at the id 51a 5100 let me first say that i'm not going to go into full detail on how to program that if you're used to programming radios uh you should know how to do that uh again uh 5100A has the DR mode. It has a very, very sophisticated DR mode with most of your repeaters already loaded into the radio for D-Star. For the analog repeaters, I recommend using a soft, uh, some sort of programming software and a programming software cable. You can use the ICOM programming software and buy their cable, or you could purchase the RT systems and their data cable. And I believe you'll find that the RT systems is more cost effective as well as it is much friendlier to use when you're configuring your radio. So as far as that's concerned, uh, there are tutorials already on the web on how to use the analog portion. What I want to cover today is how to use the D-Star portion, especially for linking and unlinking. Because that's a big deal with Northwest Georgia District Aries as we have linked repeater nets. You may be called upon to link the repeater, so this is how you do it. First of all, what I, as we go to the radio, I want to cover some basic differences here, uh, some mistakes that I see. I'll look at people's radios, and what I will see is uh, they'll have CQ, CQ, CQ up here in the top, and I'm using the Dalton repeater as an example on 145.330. This looks right. But however, as soon as we bring up the link to repeater net, I hear, I'm not hearing so-and-so. Well, I've got it set to CQCQ. Why am I not hearing them? Well, I'm going to show you why you're not being heard. If you are using CQCQCQ, you are using the incorrect setting on the radio, and I'll show you why. You have to understand some of the guts of how D-Star works. You're either using the gateway repeater or you're not. This configuration you think looks correct, but what this is, is the local CQ option. And when I pull up the call sign by touching the screen where it says CS, that shows us what the D-Star is using. Because it's local, what is happening is repeater 2 is not being used at all, and that is our gateway call sign. If the gateway call sign is not being used, you're not using the reflector. So really, you're not going beyond your local repeater. Now, someone asked me, why would you do that? Why would you even want to do that, have that kind of setting? Well, imagine that your D-Star repeater locally stays linked to a reflector all the time. Imagine that it is, uh, say it's linked to reflector 30 Bravo or reflector 30 Charlie, and you're wanting to carry on a conversation with a ham locally, and you don't want to go out across the reflector. That is then when you would go and use the local CQ, 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 rather than unlinking the reflector. That's one option. Now, let me tell you why I think that is a bad idea. Because when you're transmitting across the repeater using local CQ, CQ, CQ and having a conversation, another user in the, another part of the state or wherever the reflector is connected doesn't hear you. And they think the frequency is clear, and then they key up and start having a conversation on top of you. My recommendation is, rather than using local CQ and carrying on that conversation, if it's, uh, go ahead and unlink the reflector for your local conversation, and then relink after you're done. Now, local is fine if you want to just for a brief few brief remarks, but if you're going to carry on an extended conversation, someone is going to interrupt you. So learn how to use your reflector linking and unlinking. Uh, if your repeater owner has a problem with that, discuss that and ask what their policy is and how they prefer you do it. Again, 
Always respect the folks who own the repeater and manage the repeater. They've got a lot of money invested in it. Uh, but again, my preference is to unlink, have your conversation, and then relink. So let me show you how to fix that problem. T touch the two menu. Uh, touch it again to get the menu to come up. And on this radio, on the 7100, you would use a use repeater CQ CQ setting. But this software is more sophisticated and more updated. And use repeater kind of sounds like local CQ, so ICOM changed that. Uh, people would think, oh, I'm just using my local repeater when I say use repeater. So they decided, you know, if really the seat, if you want to go out across the gateway, you're going out usually across a reflector. You're not using linked repeaters much anymore. So they decided to place it under the reflector menu. You click reflector in the to select menu and then select use reflector. And then when we pull the call sign up again, guess what? Our R2 now says, in this case with a Dalton repeater, KA4RVTC, it now reads KA4RVTG in R2. And now when we go out and use a reflector linked repeater, we'll be heard across the reflector. You'll be heard as far as the repeater is linked. Now let's talk about linking and unlinking. Uh, on the 880, we learned that could be a kind of a chore on how to do that. You had to go through several button pushes. With the ID5100, it is much simpler. So to link to a reflector or to another repeater, there are a couple of different ways to do that. Let's go ahead and select the two menu again, and let's go to our reflector. Say we know the reflector we want to link to. So we have several options here. We have the link to reflector, the unlink to reflector, the echo test. You, we see here that we now have two pages and there's a repeater information. We would first, if we don't know for sure that the repeater is linked to anything or if we're visiting a, a, a repeater in another area, we select repeater information and then we would key up the radio and then we would receive information back from the repeater if it's linked or not. Once we verified that, it, that it's not linked to another reflector and we have permission to link, or we're sure about that, let's, we'll go and link the repeater. So let's go back to our two select, go back to our reflector. You notice it left it where I had it, so let's scroll back up and let's select link to reflector. Now we don't have any saved here, so let's go to direct input. Now all I've got to do is go up and down to select the number of the reflector. For today's exercise, we'll select 30 alpha. Actually, let's select 30 delta. We'll select, make sure that REF 030. We'll go up to the letter D with a touch screen. Again, you probably shouldn't be doing this while you're driving down the road. Just uh, make sure you've pulled off or you're in a safe location to do so. When you've selected 30 D, Go ahead and select set. Our command has changed to reflector 030DL. And when I key up for a one second to two seconds, that should cause the repeater to link if it has a gateway linking capability. Once we've linked, now we can go back to talk. Let's go back to reflector and select use reflector CQ, CQ, CQ. When we're done communicating and we're done with our conversation or with our net, we select the two select again, choose reflector, and let's go to unlink, and the, and the, and the command is already pre-programmed. We key up for a one to two seconds and the repeater should unlink. We don't want to keep unlinking, so we go back, go to reflector, and then choose use reflector, and we're ready to talk again. Now I'm gonna talk about with the ID5100 is how to set this up with DRATS. Uh, the ID5100 has a GPS built into the head and remember the rule with using DRATS is DRATS doesn't like the GPS to be turned on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and change the settings on this 5100 so that this 5100 can use DRATS. Looking at the radio, the first place we need to go is to the menu button down here. That is actually a button. Some people have asked me, uh, why is that just printed there? 
but that's the button access that's so you access your menus we're going to pull the menu up and the first thing we're going to select is gps under gps set we're going to select hit gps select then hit off let me do that one more time for you in case i went too fast we'll select g we're going to select menu select gps select gps set we're going to turn that off we're going to scroll down well we don't scroll down there's one page here we're going to go back and i don't see any kind of automatic gps on let's scroll down and make sure auto transmit is already turned off so we don't have to adjust that let's go back let's go now to there are more menus here we need to go to dv set make sure the data transmit is set to auto rather than ptt so we're going to dv data transmit it's set to auto and let me just check the settings here i think we're all right there's nothing else there now we're going to go to function we're going to scroll down to data speed data speed needs to be set to 9600 baud bit 9600 baud for d for d rats to work so now that that's set there's nothing else that i see here and let's and i believe that's just all it requires this radio is now configured to use d d rats and i hope you enjoy using your 5100a with d rats if you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me, and I'll be happy to help you do that. My contact information will be in the description below. Thank you, 73, and we hope to hear you on the air, and I hope this helps any with any confusion you have about using reflectors.